G'day folks, it's Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another topic of the week and it's painted models in Warhammer and Vince did have three specific questions which I cannot remember so I'll do my best to talk as generically and around them as I possibly can. So I think he wanted to talk about painted models and me as far as what's my attitude to painting them, how I like to play them, yada yada yada. Um, my attitude towards my opponent with painted or unpainted models and then how I think painted or unpainted models fit into tournaments. Now I fit outside the box I think of most YouTubers because I'm not most YouTubers and my hobby is fairly restricted to my local community so everything is going to be a little bit um, out of context or in that context depending on how you want to look at it. So let's kick the tires, light the fires and crack on. Right, so firstly, my own models. Um, and how are painted models important to me when it comes to playing? And am I gonna play them without being painted? And yada, 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 and what I think my experience is, my opponent's experience, etc., etc. So I've got two different pictures up here, and I think these um, cover off on one of the many different aspects of my attitude towards this hobby. Because this, sorry, not this hobby, this topic, because this topic is extremely complex so let me go back to the start and try and simplify it for myself this is just really me trying to get my own thoughts in my head in line so i can talk about this in some sort of logical order which is bound to digress into some sort of irrelevant garbage but let's see what we think so firstly i think that it's very important to play warhammer with painted models i think that playing Warhammer with painted models adds to the enjoyment of both yourself and your opponent opponent to a um, by a lot. <laughs> uh, very technical words there. I think that having painted models makes the game so much better. I think that having um, uh, your own models painted, your opponent's models painted, when everything is painted and everything is complete on the table, that is when you are achieving, um, you know, like level 10 Warhammer, right? That's when it is as good as it can be. Now, I think that even if both of those armies painted on the table are painted to a very, very basic level, I think you still are achieving that level of painted Warhammer. Like if you've got three colors and a wash, um, I think that is fine. I think that takes it up to the next level and it's all fantastic. Playing against magically marvelous, amazingly painted armies, well, while that's good, um, I'm not sure it's particularly that important. Um, and we'll sort of talk about this a little bit more as we go. But my personal attitude is that yes, you should play with painted models. And yes, you should absolutely strive to paint your models um, as well as you can. Now, what this means for me as far as my painting and my hobbying. So if you look at my iron jaws over here on the left, um, I, uh, I I play my iron jaws at the moment because they are painted. Like of all my armies I've got, they are the most painted, they're the most ready to go on the table. And even though I'd prefer to play other armies, um, they aren't painted and so I don't want to play them, right? Now, there are two components to this. There's the component of me personally, um, what I want to put on the table and what I feel is right you should put on the table, which is painted models. And then there's also the component of having a YouTube channel. Um, and that adds extra pressure to having painted models. Now, most of you will recognize and know that I've been watching my channel for a long time, that I actually think it's rare to see two fully painted armies on my channel. And that's for various reasons, which I'll go into when we get to my opponent. But having painted models is so important to me that I will get an army and often I'll send half of it out to um, a commission painter to get to a certain level uh, before I'll play it. And for me, um, having things commission painted is not uh, a matter of, well, I want to get things commission painted so that I can get a fantastic paint score and I can win tournaments or so that it looks so amazing that you know um, I feel good about the army or that I wanted to get it painted to a level that I couldn't most of the time it's not about that it's really about getting the army up to a painted a tabletop standard as quickly as possible 
because let's look at my Iron Jaws for example. So with that Iron Jaws army, um, I painted the two War Chanters to the most basic colours you can imagine. So I literally did one layer of flesh, I gave them a wash, um, I did two different colours for the armour, one different colour for the pants, just you know bleach bone on the on the weapons and the bone bits, gave it all a wash and then maybe dry brush some of the skin. That's it because I was like I want to play with this model, I need to get this model painted so the night before each game I just went and painted them. Um, and this is very much how I paint my miniatures. I say I have a game coming up this weekend, there's two or three units that I have unpainted or maybe two or three models or one unit that I have unpainted that I want to play and so for me personally I have to get it painted before the game. What this means is that I paint most of my model models in a very rushed, very tabletop manner. My objective is get it to a state where I can play it and then once I've got it to that state it's rare that I actually go back and, and touch it up or work on it again. I do sometimes but it's rare. So this sort of combination of I want to play it painted, um, I got a rush to get this thing painted in time because that's my model means that I paint a lot of stuff and I paint things very quickly. Um, the picture on the right, you can see those storm fiends there, you can see the arc warlock, you can see the engineer, um, and then you can see my opponent's uh, KO, his Arcanauts, right? So the difference here, um, I needed to get those Storm Fiends ready for a tournament. I got back from a three week bush trip and um, um, the tournament was in one week's time and basically my whole army was unpainted, in fact most of it was unassembled. So I think I had nine Storm Fiends um, I needed to paint and I painted them all in one night and then the next day I did little touch ups on them. Right, um, and that's literally like I'm at work that day, and then I get home at night, and I just like power paint through them. Um, very, very basic, like um, a color, a wash, a dry brush, um, you know, black for the the metal. Give that a bit of a dry brush, do some sort of edges with um, some metallics, um, and then get warp stone bloody color and pick out some of the details, and um, you know, wash down the metals and you know, do some base, stick on a, a piece of grass and you're done. Um, when I look at these models on the table now, right, I kind of look at them like I was ha I'm very happy that I have this completed painted army to take to the tournament and I look at it and I go, fuck yeah, like you did well by putting in all that effort and getting everything done in time for the tournament. But now after the tournament, when I look at these models on the table, I think, fuck, I wish I'd have taken more time. Right, I really wish I had have taken more time. They're such beautiful models and really put in the effort and done the highlights properly and, and done the colour scheme properly and, and just taken more care when I painted them as well because, like I said, I'm always working on so many different projects that once I do have something painted, it's rare that I go back and touch it up. And so, um, you know, put these guys on the table and there was another unit of three storm fins that I took specifically for this game and I painted them the night before as well. And... Um, they're literally just one colour in a wash and um, I put them on the table and I was just sort of cringing, you know. Um, a lot of the time from the, the photos and so forth you can't really tell a difference but um, yeah same as Ica Claw um, and that wall, uh, that engineer there, I painted them both the night before this game against the KO and um, because I had to put painted models on the table and um, they're not painted very good but they're painted good enough. Um, and that's sort of my attitude, right? So I go ahead and now, um, if you look at pineapples, for example, so pineapples, I painted myself and I put a fair bit of effort in. I worked on him for probably a week or so, and um, which is probably not a lot of time for some people painting a big model like that. But um, when I get myself a big model like that that I really want to paint, I don't mind um, spending my time to do it because um, I want it to look good and I want that sense of achievement. But because it delays everything else in the army, you know, I'll send. So like those pigs um, and the brutes were done by Terminate on, Terminate on Site Gaming, which is Christian I play against. Um, he's really good for very cheaply painting things up to a tabletop standard. And um, then he gave them back to me and there was still sort of one or two little things that um, I needed to do to touch up on them just to get them to, um, to be complete. And that's sort of okay. Um, 
so yeah for me listen playing painted is very very important um, I'm probably okay to play an army with one unpainted unit in it um, I'll try and base coat it or something as well uh, you know I'll, I'll at least spray it and wash it or something if I'm going to do that um, like you've seen that with my corn like my blood warriors I don't know sorry that my blood reavers for some reason I don't know why I just can't get the motivation to paint these guys there's only 10 of them and with how I paint them it would take me literally one night and they'd be done but um, I, I don't know why I can't can't bring myself to do it and so every time I've played with my corn they're an essential part of the army and so you've seen them unpainted on the table with the other you know painted stuff um, I know it's weird but I will not not pay play my entire corn army um, because I have one unit of that whole army that's not painted. I find that to be a little bit extreme and I expect my opponent can forgive me that one unpainted unit of 10 guys, um, you know, given all the other effort and so forth that we've gone through to sort of make this happen. Everything is a, a work in progress. But to summarize my attitude towards my models, I strive and I bust my ass to try to make sure that the armies I play with are painted, completely painted, or 90% painted. And in fact, I go to the effort to pay other people money to paint my armies so that I can have them ready to play in time, or I even go to the point where I sacrifice my quality on the paint job a lot in order to get it on the, the, the table and, and have it painted. And I don't just do that for my opponent, I also do it for you, you viewers, like the, the YouTubers. Um, I mean, my opponents probably don't give a, a rat's ass. Like, it's only really me personally that, um, you know, I've got this thing. And also, you know, the fact that I want to try and at least have some paint on it for you guys so you're not just watching um, grey models because I understand how shit, shit that is. So, for me, it's really important. As far as um, Vince also brought up, like, how important is it that you put those grey models down and play? So if it's your first army, he understood, but if it's, you know, your fourth or your fifth army, then why can't you just play your other armies? And yes, he is completely right. Um, and so, for example, now while I'm building up my Slaanesh, my Fire Slayers and so forth, um, you're going to see me playing my painted stuff. So you're going to see me playing my, you know, orcs and whatever else. Now I don't want to play them. Um, I'm just playing them because that's what I've got painted. I really want to run my Slaanesh, but none of that shit's painted. So um, I'm just not going to play it. It's what I want to play them, but I'm not because I personally feel like I'm falling below some standard. And also for the purposes of the YouTube channel, I don't want to do it. Okay. So despite me wanting to play them, I'm not going to do it because of maybe, you know, some um, sort of pressures I feel that come from myself and, and from the internet. So I'm going to play my Iron Jaws and so forth. But um, another thing to consider there is that I buy and sell armies like they're going out of fashion. And, and all of you guys know that. Um, I will play an army to a point. Um, Normally it's sort of around about 10 games, and then I will go on to the next army. Um, a few lucky armies will get shelved, and they'll come back out later, like the Iron Jaws, for example. Um, but majority of armies, I sort of get to a point, and then I sell it. And I use the funds from selling my old army to build my new army, right? So I'm sort of recycling my, my funds. Instead of just pouring fresh money into this sort of hobby um, continuously, I try and take the old stuff that's just sitting in a cupboard I'm not using or I don't want to use it anymore and um, use that to get new enjoyment out of the hobby by new, buying new armies. And what this means is that um, I don't always have four fully painted armies sitting in the cupboard that I can just use at any time. Um, more often than not I have um, one three quarters or you know um, one sort of completed army and then two or three on the go. Um, and it's a funny dynamic for me because like with the expectations of myself and also having a YouTube channel, um, 
and not feeling very comfortable playing armies until they at least have some level of paint on them, I often have to buy the entire army, get it to in, put a lot of effort into getting it to some sort of base level of paint before I can even play test it and work out if I like that army, like how it plays or like whatever, um, before I decide to actually sell it. Like it's really quite ridiculous because the intelligent thing to do would be maybe to buy the army or buy the models or whatever and just play it a few times or proxy it, which I, I, I basically refuse to proxy. I don't know why, I just I don't like doing it. Um, but it means I put in a hell of a lot of effort before I decide whether I like it or not. I should just get it, play with plastic models, go, oh, fuck, I don't like this and sell it, right? Or, or no, this isn't an army that's going to last and sell it because models retain their value when they're unpainted and so forth. Um, better than when you've, you've painted them, especially painted them shit like me. So, I mean, for all the hoo-ha about painted models, the intelligent thing to do is not paint your models. I know that's going to kill Vince to hear it, but um, if you're just like the guy who gets one or two armies because you love the models and you're all about collecting the army and painting them and the gaming is like a byproduct of that, then, um, you know, paint your models and who cares. But if you're someone like me who wants to play test and go through every army and collect every army and is not sure how long an army is going to last on your shelf, you're probably better off not painting it, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, just play as many games as you like and uh, work out if you want to keep it and then, um, and then maybe paint it then. Um, that's probably not the point of this whole topic of the week, but I guess that's the unfortunate summary I've come to. Or... You can put yourself through a lot of pain, waste a lot of time painting up an army that you're not going to keep or you're not really going to play with that much. Um, hmm. Anyways, that wasn't the conclusion I was expecting to arrive to, um, but that's where I've got. So let's talk about my opponents. So when you're playing against your opponent's armies, um, I've got here Alex and Christian Stormcast armies and a pair of shoes in the background. And um, I thought this was pretty sort of classic because both of these guys who are, who are two of my most regular opponents have had their Stormcast armies for two years, right? Since the game came out, they bought Stormcast, they've been painting and playing Stormcast. And Alex has, um, digressed off a few times and started different sort of projects and different armies and had a bit of a break from the hobby and things like that as well. Um, but I suppose the point is, is two years into having this army, the armies that I'm playing against are still unpainted. A lot of you are going to think like, what the hell? Like, you know, it's Stormcast, that's plenty of time. But both of these guys can field 2000 point fully painted armies um each of these guys in the two years they've had their armies have had three or four different variants of their lists right um and each time you add in new variations like you have to paint those models up and so forth so they could play 2000 points of painted warhammer but they don't want to play 2000 points of painted warhammer because they're trying tournament lists they're testing models and every almost every single game or every few games we have they tweak their list they implement a new unit they drop it in they drop it out and so forth um, so what this means is let's look at um, Colin he's the uh, army on the right for example with the um, four concussors I love it how like one guy Alex has got four fulminators and um, and Colin's got four concussors and um, I've got four concussors. It just goes to show it's a pretty staple part of a list, I think. But um, so Colin, in the army that he has now, so he does has doesn't always run this army, obviously, but this time he wanted to, and um, he's got one and a half unpainted concussors there in this whole army. Now he paints like a grandma, um, so literally it will take him like if he's sitting down working on hobby and painting in the evening. It will probably take him a week to a week and a half to paint one model, right? He's a slow painter. Um, he takes his time. He um, And apart from that, he's just a slow painter. It's how he paints. Um, maybe it's to do with other life stuff, whatever else. But he, he's just a really slow painter. 
So in the time it will take him to do one model, I will normally do like a whole unit or two units, right? But he's done one model. So for example, his one and a half concussors there, like he's currently working on Zench because um, he's done Stormcast for two years. He's sick of them, so he's painting on Zench. I think he's had his Zench for about a month and I think he's done one Skyfire. Um, but that's like of active hobby, right? If that makes sense. So it's not like him being slack. It's him actively hobbying in between gaming, he's painting, he's painting his Zench and he's done like one Skyfire or something. Um, but if he was to go and finish off those two concussors, for example, you know, that's probably like two weeks of painting there. Um, and if we were to have the mentality of, you know, oh, I don't play against unpainted armies or I don't pl like play against unpainted models or whatever, um, Colin would have to play me with an army that he doesn't like because he's played it to death already with his painted stuff. Or he wouldn't have to play me for like two weeks until he painted that stuff. And that means I wouldn't have a game for two weeks. He wouldn't have a game for two weeks. That's like two games less that we would have in our life. And I think the enjoyment of those two games trumps the enjoyment of having those extra few models um, painted or not, right? Um, same as Alex over here. He's in exactly the same situation where he has, you know, multiple Stormcast lists that are completely painted. But every game now, he's tweaking it for CanCon, trying in new allies, trying this and that. And um, and he is maybe some often the opposite attitude of me, where I will rush models and produce low quality shit to get them painted on the table for the game that weekend. He will say, no, I'm not going to rush my quality of paint for that game, I'll just play with an unpainted model, and then when I know what I want and it is painted to the quality, the level I'm happier, he's happier in his hobby, right? So you look at his army at the moment, um, most of it's painted, but then he's got the Lord Ver Veritant, the Lord Celestin on foot, and the Jade Wizard um, that are unpainted, and he's also got some complete grey models because he just borrowed them on the day and said, listen, I want to buy, uh, borrow some long strikes off you, um, obviously I haven't painted mine, so... Um, no worries, there you go. Um, so here's two of my opponents, which I've been playing against for two years with the same army, Stormcast, the same faction for two years. And the last few games I've had against them, they've all had some unpainted models in their army. So how do I feel about this? Well, I don't really give a freaking rat. Um, I do have to say that if you have something like Zillin F that you could just spray brown and dry brush and put some, you know, highlight some of the little swirly bits and sprinkle some fucking shit on the base and call them done. Um, I would probably be like, like, you know, then you can kind of get your army to a very basic level very quick and work them as you go. Stormcast are the same. You can spray them sort of gold, wash them and do a, a color on them and, and they're good enough to play um, in the short term. But um, if I had any sort of hard and fast rule about not playing, you know, painted models, not playing, then I wouldn't have had any games since GHB 2017 have come out. You know, because I've been playing against Stormcast in different variations of lists. I've been playing against KO, where he has, you know, one half-painted unit or semi-painted unit, whatever. And, um, yeah, I would just wouldn't have had any games, um, which means no battle reports. And I can guarantee you that the enjoyment that I've had from those games far exceeds the enjoyment I've had from having painted models. So even if every single model on the table was unpainted, both mine and my opponents, the enjoyment that I would have from that gaming would be far superior, from having four games in that period, will be far superior to the reward I would have got if, um, uh, if I had have had one game with painted models, for example. Now, having said that, if those games, four games, were with completely painted armies, then that would be a whole new level of, of, of enjoyment, and that would be the ultimate level of enjoyment, and that's what we should strive for. But I suppose the point is, is I would never ever sacrifice um, the gaming experience and getting a game in with my friends and hanging out and having that time to hang out with my friends simply for the sake that your army is not painted. Um, I don't really feel that that's a rational um, mentality or that that's anything that, you know, you're sacrificing so much just to set some sort of benchmark, which um, sometimes shouldn't be achieved or sometimes is un unachievable given, given the time frame. I mean, even like Alex. So Alex is a police officer. He probably didn't want me to tell you guys that, but he is. 
And uh, most of the time we play is actually he's just come off night shift. So he's been out all day, like, you know, arresting scumbags and bloody giving people overpriced speeding tickets and so forth. But, you know, you have a pretty shit day. You know, you, you have days where you've walked in on a suicide, you've had to deal with bodies, you've got bloody um, road accidents, you know, quad bike accidents, like some of the stuff that, you know, people like real scum of the earth, drug, add, drug addicts that are robbing people or bashing women and all this sort of stuff, you know, and you have to deal with that sort of on a daily basis. And then after your shift, after you've out on the beat all night, you come around in the morning, you know, I'm just gotten out, gotten out of bed, he's coming around after a full day's work and playing Warhammer with me, right? And, um, you know, whereas I can get home from work at five o'clock or whatever, and then push in a few hours to paint up my models, maybe or put, you know, three levels of paint on them to get them ready for a game, that's really probably not that achievable for him and his line of work and the sort of shift work that he does, right? So, you know, I mean, if I was to sort of be, oh, no, only painted models, what a ridiculous fucking, you know, it just seems absolutely ridiculous to me having said that though we should all strive to play with painted models naturally um i will never i will never disagree with that fundamental idealistic sort of statement but you know when we put the the reality of it in um i don't really care um that much um tournaments well tournaments are in, uh, tournaments are interesting vince did specifically say um don't worry about your one day sort of tournament event um uh you know think about your gts sort of like your two day you know five to six day events whatever else uh well that kind of rules me out of this topic because well i've never been to one that's right i've never been to a two day gt not for warhammer fantasy or for age of sigma or 40k or anything in my entire life i never have um I don't know, they're pretty freaking expensive in Australia to get to if I want to go to, you know, the, the hobby scene in Adelaide, South Australia is probably not that big um, that that happens. Uh, it might start happening in the next few years, but um, not the short term. Short term. And if I want to go to um, somewhere like Canberra or Melbourne for a weekend, um, I'm probably going to have to drop maybe 200 grand, 200 grand, two grand probably about a grand, grand and a half if I do a real mega budget, but I'm not that kind of guy. Um, and I can kind of go to Bali or Thailand for the same amount. So it's kind of hard to explain to my missus that I want to spend X amount of money to go to, you know, to catch a plane, to go here, to blah, 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 um, to play Warhammer when we could spend the same money to go on a family holiday. Right, it's kind of hard. Um, so when we have a one-day tournament here, a three-game one-day tournament here, it's a pretty big event. <laughs> like, it really is for us, and uh, people really put in a lot of effort. And um, our three-day one-day events are sort of like your grand tournaments. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Now, how do I feel about Painted Army's tournaments? Well, I think that it separates the boys from the men a little bit. I think that you're more than welcome to bring unpainted models to a tournament. Um, I think that uh, a paint score and quite a, a decent paint score, giving you a, um, uh, a bonus score per game is essential to make sure that never ever an unpainted army can win the tournament. Um, we recently had, well at Southern Impact, um, Woody's Corn Demons Army, which had a few unpainted units, um, won that tournament because he tabled all of his opponents and um, he had enough of a paint score so where you know maybe the paint score per game was going to be five points he probably scored three points um, you know per game on top of that so that was still enough to get him the win um, but so I think you can take an army to um, a tournament with a very basic level of paint and win no problems I think you can even take a army to a tournament with like one unit completely unpainted and still win and that's okay you should be able to win on that but i have to say it's pretty fucking poor form like when you see people at tournaments um and they're trying to play competitively and they're trying to really win the tournament or go for the tournament but they have underpainted models or an unpainted unit i think that's pretty poor form actually i i, I should um reconsider that 
I don't care how badly your models are painted. If you've painted them and that's how you paint and you've put in effort, then I don't care what your models look like, whether it's painted amazing or painted shit. You're in the same level for me because you've put in the effort to take a painted army to the tournament and you're trying to win it, and that's a good thing, right? Um, and that's why I do like score bonus scores for tournaments that um, give you one point per thing. So are your models based? Yes, one point. Doesn't matter the level of basing. Are they based? Yes. Do they have three colors and a wash? Yes, 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 yes. You know, okay, you've got a, a total of five points for that. And so a commission, beautifully painted commission army, which people couldn't normally match, mm -hmm. and someone who's just put in the effort but it's a terrible painter at home but it's made sure they've ticked all those boxes, mm -hmm. gets the same score. Because while the level of enjoyment playing against that beautifully commissioned painted army will be higher, you're still getting that painted uh, additional level of enjoyment from the shit painted army as well. So, you know, you can have separate painting competitions and so forth that I'm a big believer in, but um, but if the guy that has unpainted stuff, he, he shouldn't be getting scored. But I don't think that should deter you from attending a tournament as well. Like, if you just have a completely grey army, right, unpainted, and you want to go to the tournament because you want to pay you want to have that experience of having five or six games or three games back to back all your friends are going and so forth go to the tournament absolutely go to the tournament most of the time in my experience the people with the unpainted armies are at the bottom of the list they're at the bottom of the tournament um, and that's not necessarily because of the paint points that they're missing out on it's because generally they have new unplay tested un you know um, unconsidered lists and um, they haven't got a lot of experience or a lot of time for a hobby. They've just come along for the day and they end up getting beaten and they're down the bottom anyways. So if you have 100 people at a tournament and 50 of them want to bring unpainted you know, armies and they ended up down at the bottom um, due to any mechanism, but they were down the bottom all having fun against each other, having a laugh and playing Warhammer, I think that's a real positive thing. That's an awesome thing. Um, but naturally, if you want to try to win that tournament, um, I think it's pretty bloody important that you take um, take a painted army. Now, would I prefer to go to a 20-man tournament where every single army is painted and every single army has a display board as opposed to a 100-man tournament where 60% of the armies are not fully painted and only 40% are? Well... That's a difficult question because number-wise, I mean, if it's a 100, 100 people tournament and I've got, well, those numbers are arbitrary and I've just made them up, so it's probably not true. Um, but I suppose, should, would I rather go to a smaller tournament where everyone has painted models than a larger tournament where everyone doesn't? I don't know. For me personally, I'd be one of the painted few. And I think for me, if I... I'm going to a tournament, I don't care if it's got 20 people or 100 people, um, apart from maybe bragging rights, but the simple fact is I'm going to go through three, five or six games amongst those 20 people and never play the same person twice again anyways, well hopefully, maybe with the 20 person that might happen, but the TL would normally try and avoid that. So I'm going to play against, you know, all beautifully painted stuff, and I, re I like to think that if I go to a tournament, 100 player tournament, Maybe the first game might be against some unpainted stuff, but um, after that, normally it's all painted going in. So I'm not sure, but I think definitely a tournament is not just a gaming tournament, but a hobby tournament as well. Um, I've, you know what? I'll just look back at the screen. I've just been talking shit. But let's look at these two armies here. Um, this is actually a point that completely probably disagrees with everything I've just been saying. But it's important to look at. So, firstly, on the left, we have these brand new Primaris Space Marines White Scars. This is from a 40k tournament that was happening recently when um, I was playing some Age of Sigmar at the club. Um, now, this army is really beautiful. I was going to put a close up in, but I couldn't. So, he's done the white, really great. Um, he's got, like, you know, basically a unit of the new stuff that's come out, like one unit of each. And um, he hasn't really built any Mega Cheese. Um, he's just like bought this cool army with a fantastic paint job, right? The White Scars Primaris Space Marines army here is 100% like a thousand points for hobby. 
right? And he's got taken his beautiful army, his beautifully painted army, um, and said, this is my army, this is what I'm going to take to the tournament, right? And um, that's fantastic. On the opposite side, right, you have the cheese fucker. So um, uh, this is actually a guy in our club. So if you do watch this, Woody, which I know you probably won't, I'm just calling you the cheese fucker, not to like hurt your feelings or be mean or anything, but I'm just trying to put you on a stereotypical box, which I don't mean personally, but I'm just using you an example of what a cheese fucker is. So here's someone, he's going to the tournament with a, I want to say, an underpainted army. Some of his models are painted really quite nice and have put some effort into, and others are just absolute shit. He's really put the absolute bare minimum in. Um, some of them aren't even painted, and some of them he's just put the bare minimum in to get that bare minimum sort of point score. Um, and he's just bought, built the cheesiest, like, disgusting army that he can because he wants to win, and, and he, he sort of said, I don't really care about winning the tournament. I just want to smash people. Right. So you guys can make what you want of um, that sort of mentality. I think he really would have actually loved to have won the tournament, but because his stuff wasn't painted, he knew he probably wasn't. So he just sort of, sort of saying that. Um, but I actually kind of find this quite a bit, that there are quite a few power gamers that are so much about the game and so much about building the cheese and so much about beating their opponents that they're less about the hobby and the paint, and they will show up to tournaments with an army like that. Um, and they don't care that they're not painted. They don't even care that they're not necessarily going to win the tournament because they're not fully painted. As long as they can table five of their opponents in a row, um, they're still winners, right? And I just thought this was a an interesting sort of juxtapose where you've got, um, you know, this Primaris Space Marines army, beautiful. Um, that looks like the sort of thing that should win a tournament. Um, but on the other side, you've got this buddy Dick Cheese, which um, doesn't look like it should be contended for the tournament at all, but more often than not, it's the type of list and type of gamer that is up the top. So I thought that was interesting to draw to, to bring people's attention. I've been talking for far too long, and um, well, I'm not sure anything I said has been relevant, so let me try and wrap it up. For me personally, I like to take painted models and play with painted models as much as I can. And um, while I have played with very unpainted models in the past, uh, I try to avoid it like the plague. And at most, but I am reasonably happy to put, say, an army down the table that has one unpainted unit. I feel okay doing that when I'm playing against my friends. As far as my opponents go, I don't care if they're painted or not, although I really do appreciate it when people put the effort in to paint their armies, and I think it takes the whole game to a whole new level of enjoyment um, when everything is painted. However, I would never sacrifice a game, I would never put unfair expectations onto my opponent, or never um, put an opponent down, or make them feel that their army is worse, or that I'm not enjoying playing with them and spending the time with them together because they haven't painted their army. Um, I think given everything in real life that we have going on and so forth, and Warhammer is that opportunity to really just escape and roll some dice and have a beer and a laugh, um, I would hate for my opponent to rock up, he's got unpainted stuff, and have a negative experience because he has unpainted models. I think that is absolute garbage. So by all means, um, I think we should strive to um, paint our models for our opponents. And uh, I want to see my opponent rock up with a painted army. I think it's really fantastic. Um, it gives that the whole game a sense of completeness. It's really not that mega important to me. And the same for tournaments as well. Um, I would love an ideal world where everyone brings painted shit, but um, uh, with tournaments, actually, I, I'm just going to say now, if you bring in unpainted shit to a tournament, then um, yeah, no, nah, again, too, I, I don't want to be a dick about this because, okay, let me, how can I rephrase this? When I play against an army in a tournament, I feel disappointed if it's unpainted, right? So when it's my turn to have a game at a tournament and the opponent puts their stuff down, it's unpainted, I feel disappointed that their stuff is not painted only at a tournament, right? Because 
me and a lot of other people I know, we bust our fucking asses to make sure our stuff is painted before a tournament, right? We, we really put in like insane, like the week leading up to a tournament is just insane hobby. It's so great. And to get there and someone, um, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing. You know, when someone puts their opponent, their army down, obviously you, and you know they've been busting their ass for the last week, you're like, yes, let's make this game as good as it can. When someone else just puts down their stuff, you're like, oh, all right. Um, and I don't want to judge that person for, for bringing an unpainted army, but um, I still feel a little bit disappointed because it's meant to be sort of like, I suppose, the build up, the pinnacle of all your hobby. Um, but however, I, when I say that, I don't want anyone to get the, the idea that I'm saying in any way that people should not bring unpainted armies to tournaments because it goes back to the gaming experience, you know, I think everyone should participate in every tournament that they can as much as often, whether it's painted or not. And uh, often there are life things that sort of get in the way. But never, ever, ever should an unpainted um, uh, unpainted army have any chance of winning a tournament, whether it's a one day or it's a GT or anything like that. I think that sort of summarized everything. I'm not really sure. Um, it really is a complex topic, but um, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.